Hello and welcome to another free CAD tutorial with me, Andrew. Today I'm going to be explaining what the shape and subshape binders do and how you can use them within FreeCAD. So let's take a look at these tools, starting with the shape binder, which can be found up here on our tool ribbon within the part design workbench. When you click on the shape binder icon, you'll be given a choice between selecting individual pieces of geometry, such as faces, edges, or vertices. You can select and remove geometry with relative ease. Although, if you do want to select multiple individual faces, Note that you will have to keep going back and forth between the Add Geometry button and the face you want to select. A way around this will be to select your faces and then press the Shape Binder tool. As you can see, all the faces that I selected are now added to our list in the left hand parameters box. You can also alter your selection if you aren't happy with what you've picked. And so can double click back onto the Shape Binder, which you'll see in our tree to the left, and I can remove or add geometry. So another option for this shape binder would be for me to pad it or pocket it. So if I click on the pad icon, as you can see, it creates a pad. And if I click on the shape binder again and click on pocket, you can see that it creates a pocket. Now I can also use this as a sketch plane, if I undo that, by hiding the pocket itself and clicking onto the shape binder and then clicking the sketch icon, which will then allow me to sketch a shape and extrude that upwards like so. You have to physically select the shape binder itself in the actual window. You can't select it in the tree and then click on sketch as it will just ask you to select a plane. So also when you're using the shape binder, uh, you have to have an active body or a body uh, in the tree. If I try to create a shape binder now, I'm allowed to, it will allow me to. If I try to create a shape binder when I don't have a body, uh, it will throw up an error message or a warning message and tell us that we need to have an active body. Another thing we can also do is if we've got a cube, let's say from the part design workbench, which is what this one's from, and I click on say this face here, and I click on the shape binder, I can say okay. You'll notice that the shape binder has been added into the active body itself. In some cases we might want that, and in other cases we might not want that. So that's just something to be aware of. So for another example, what I've got here is obviously the original body, and I'm gonna create myself a new body by clicking this icon up here. I'm going to click on the face here, which has got our slot in it, and I'm going to click on the shape binder. I'm going to press OK. Now you'll see that it's slightly offset, and the way that we solve that is clicking on the shape binder and setting the trace support to true. And as you can see, it updates. And then I'm going to create myself a sketch, and I'm going to click on the YZ plane and press OK. I'm going to sketch a very quick box just around our original geometry. And I'm going to go back over to the model task and I'm just going to hide our original body. Now you'll notice our shape binder is still there and that's because it's in our active body currently. I'm going to click on this icon up here which is going to select geometry from another body and I'm going to click on the edges around the outside like so. Now the reason I hid the original body is because if it wasn't hidden it makes selecting the geometry uh, a hell of a lot harder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to Click on the slot icon, and I'm going to sketch that between these two points here. And I'm going to make these two points intersect. I'm just going to throw up an error, click to select, and I'm going to delete that error. Now I'm not going to constrain any of this, I'm just going to close out of that sketch. And I'm going to right click on our body, transform it, and move it in the direction, like so. Clicking OK. Now you'll notice that the uh, Shape binder is still in its original location if we reappear our body, and that's because our trace support is obviously on. I'm going to select our sketch and I'm going to extrude that by clicking on the pad icon. I'm going to press OK. Now you'll see that our slot on our original body is now projected onto our second body, which is all well and good. But what if I now edit or change the position of our original slot? Let's say I want that bottom left of our cube and close out of that. Well, you'll see that our geometry has now changed. Now, you'll also notice that our slot has changed in size. And the reason for that is because I never constrained it originally. So if I was to constrain the radius of this to 5 mil, close out of that. If I now go back over to our original body with the original sketch, and I move that up a little bit, click close, you'll see how it all moves together like so. 
Now be careful when you are moving your sketch. So this body is slightly smaller than our second body. And if I move that off of the actual geometry, I know you can't really see it here, but if I move that off the geometry, you'll notice how it doesn't move. Our second slot doesn't move with it because it is totally confused and you'll see that it gets an error. Now again, the geometry itself doesn't actually have to be a slot. So I could actually delete this slot. I could say, ah, oh, do you know what, I want, I want two circles here. So varying sizes, like so. If I close out of that, you'll see that we've got our two circles. And again, if I change the position of our slot and close out of that, you'll see how the holes have moved with our slot. So just one other thing very quickly, is that if I click on this sketch here, you'll see that both of these circles are attached to the original slot. So if I delete that circle there, and I create a, a sketch of a circle that's not even attached to anything, and I close out of that, and I manipulate the original sketch, so let's say I move it up and to the right, close out of that, you'll see that the sketch that wasn't attached is obviously in exactly the same place. So when you create a sketch and you're trying to take geometry, say like, say like this slot, it has to be attached in some way. So the same with if you're just going to attach it to the lines here, make sure that it's constrained to the original piece of geometry that you've selected. Otherwise it might not work out how you want, uh, it definitely won't move if you move the other sketch. So another thing that we can do is uh, transform our piece of geometry, so our individual bodies. So in this case we know that in the X it won't actually do anything, but we can change it in the Y and in the Z, and we can actually change the position of these holes depending on which body that we change. So if I was to transform this body in the Y, and say OK, you'll see that the holes obviously move more in a negative direction. If I move the original body, the cube, and I move that down, you'll see how the holes move down. Transforming those can actually change how our geometry comes out on each individual body. That's also down to the fact that we've got our trace support set to true. And if I was to set that to false, you'll see that the holes move back to where the geometry or the shape binder was originally set. So even if I move our original body in that direction, nothing actually changes. So moving on to subshape binders. Now the two tools have got very similar little bits to them, but they also do have very little differences. So you can find the subshape binder to the right of the shape binder tool, and as you can see it's green. Here I've just got myself a cube which I've created in the part workbench. So compared to the shape binder, if I was to click on the shape binder now, it would ask me to get an active body. Even if I selected the cube and clicked on the shape binder, as you can see it still throws up the same warning. So that's one difference straight away. I can create a binder without being in an active body. I can also create a binder without actually selecting an object. So let's say I want this face to be inside the binder. What I can do is I can select the face and I can drag the cube onto the binder. As you can see, it's now taken that face that we selected and created our binder. Let's say I want to add another face. All I have to do is click onto that face and drag the cube onto the binder again. Even if I double click onto this, it doesn't actually do anything. It doesn't allow me to add or remove geometry, similar to that of the shape binder. So let's say I just want this face now. Well, again, I will click on that face, click and drag on the cube. However, this time I'm going to hold control. And then as I drop that onto the binder, you'll see how it just selects that face and it removes the other one. This seems to be a little bit more complex compared to the uh, shape binder itself, especially without the add or remove geometry but hopefully that's something that could potentially be changed in the future. Another way around this would be to delete our original binder, select the faces, edges or vertices that you'd like, and then click on the subshape binder, which gives us the results that we might be looking for. Similar to that of the shape binder, you also have a load of parameters down the bottom here, which you can change at your free will. Moving into this bench here, I've got myself two bodies. I've got myself a cylinder and I've got myself a cube. So what do I want to do in here? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select our box and I'm going to create myself a subshape binder. I'm then going to select that binder, click on the Boolean operations, and I'm going to set that to cut and say OK. What you'll see is that we've now cut a section out of our cylinder and our box fits in nicely like so. Now this would be useful, especially if you don't want to delete your original geometry especially when you're using Boolean operations. 
So if I undo that a second and I get our binder back, another thing that sets the subshape binder apart from the original shape binder is that we can change the placement or the position of our binder. So if I set that to minus 10, you can see now that it's on the other side of our part. You'll also notice as I change our box position, you'll see that our binder actually moves with it as well. So our placement sort of offsets it in a sense. Again, if I want to select a face, click on our shape binder. But as you can see, if I click on that binder and try to use the extrude button or the pad, you'll see that nothing happens. And that's because it's not attached to our active document or our active body. What I would have to do is, is I'd have to move our square back, say OK, and then select our binder, click on the pad, and you'll see that it's now attached, like so. We can also pocket that if we'd like to. We could select the binder here, click on the Boolean operations, and I could say I want to fuse that, OK. And then we could set the refine to true, which just tidies up our geometry. Overall, depending on what you're going to use these tools for, they can be really useful, especially if you're creating multiple parts that require certain bits of geometry to be in particular places. I think these two tools are very similar in the way they perform and they only have a few little bits that make them stand apart from each other. So I'm assuming eventually they'll just become one tool. In one sense, it's hard to see where one tool ends and the other begins, as you could complete similar tasks in the same way, especially in the scenarios that I tested them in. I will continue to learn more about this tool and how we can use it and possibly bring you an update in the future. As anything, the Subshape Binder has only just been released, so I'm sure there'll be more documentation on what we can do in the future. That's all for today's tutorial. I've really just scraped the surface, so give it a go for yourselves and see how you find it. And hopefully, I've taught you something new that can expand on your free CAD knowledge. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you dislike the video, give it a thumbs down. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And as always, have an epic weekend, and I'll see you in the next video.